All right, so I'm going to be doing the SMR clutch pack, the six disc clutch pack, and the 60% stiffer springs and the uh, the billet clutch plate that I got from Man in the Box. There's Chimera Man in the Box. They're both relatively the same. Um, I know this looks kind of crazy, maybe not at first glance, but um, I don't have my clutch cable on. I don't have half the bolts in there. My engine mount's gone. I know. Um, I took off my T-Rex cage so I can do this. Um, I actually did do this, but I messed up the beginning, so I'm kind of just re-recording the beginning. So... Uh, long story short, if you want to install this clutch pack, then this video is perfect, obviously. But if you did already install the clutch pack, whether you have problems or not, I highly suggest you watch and see because there's I there's a 90% chance that there's a step in this that you've never heard of because no one has mentioned it. And when I meant, well, Mike at Mo Power Performance actually told me about it because I put this clutch pack in for the first time on my red bike and. Uh, it felt like shit. Like it was so bad. It was buck. Like I would uh, let it warm up all the way, hold the clutch in, put it in first, and it would jolt like violently jolt. Uh, it would hard shift. It was it was terrible. Clutch was slipping and everything. And uh, everyone's. I've never heard anyone complain. Everyone loves this pack. I mentioned that to him. Like just I was like, hey, I put this clutch in. This is what's happening. You think I got a dud? He goes, no. You uh, did you do this? Like this step. It's just easier to show you. I'll explain it all later. I said, no, I didn't do it. Took it back apart, did it how he said, and it's beautiful. It works fantastic. Uh, ironically, just yesterday, someone actually, someone from uh, one of the groups I'm in, you know, I've spoken to him a bunch of times, a cool guy. He knew half of it. Like, he actually knew part of it, but not the whole thing. And I told him what to try. He took his apart, did it the way I mentioned, said it works great. So it's just some. I even went back and watched all these YouTubers, and no one mentions it. It's a big step. I don't even think it's in the instructions. So no one seems to know about this. Um, so if you installed this and it's, uh, shifting like shit and it's just running like shit, like clutch wise, then this is probably your problem. And I'm going to go over it. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to show you like when I put it together, I'll point out the part and everything else. I'm kind of re-recording. So it's just, it's easier to show you than explain. Um, so anyway, uh, so to do this, it's relatively simple. Also, another thing I wanted to mention was I already did the clutch springs. I did a video on that. Um, I'm not going to direct you to that because I'm going to go over it all. And I'm going to actually do it this time because I kind of put the stock ones in before. It was I was just trying to show the process. Went through a whole thing at the last minute. I was like, I don't think I'm going to put that into this bike. I want to put in the other one. Um, but I wanted to make the video. I was trying to be steady and everything. And like I told some people I was going to be doing it. They were waiting on the video. And uh, so I put the stock ones back in and some people lost their minds, which I understand, but the process is identical. But this time I am actually going to put the springs and the plate in correctly. Um, I have the uh, the pressure plate I tapped. You can go, I would suggest going to Grand Beardo and get a pre-tapped one if you don't want to do it yourself. It's like 30 or 40 bucks. All right, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I just broke them all loose. They're very loose. You know, that's how they're supposed to be. Do a few turns. A few turns and just do this it's tedious it takes a little bit but this is how you have to do it when we install them we're going to do the same thing but as you can see there's only three bolts and the the chimera and the main the billet clutch plates they have six bolts now you could run it with only three of the bolts like this and just leave two of them empty because only these three are threaded these three are not threaded on the pressure plate so I mesh a lot of people, you could buy modified ones, you can modify yourself, which is what I'm gonna do. Uh, I already did it with the red one, but it's not mandatory. There's a few people that actually run it, just the three bolts and it's fine, but you are running a little bit more of a risk that I feel is unnecessary if you have the means to tap it, you know what I'm saying? I think a new pressure plate, that uh, modified pressure plate is about the same price as a new one. It's like 20 or 30 bucks, so. For that little bit of, for that to be, you know, to add a little bit of peace of mind, I think is worth it. Just make sure that uh, when you buy one, you get sent the correct one, you know, which is hard to do, but save you a lot of headache. All right, so this is about off. That's fun. All right. All right, so these are totally out, except for that one, so I lied. All right. Just like that. The only thing I'm keeping is the bearing. You could get a new bearing. It's probably like five bucks, but that one's fine. So take these shitty springs out. These are fucking useless. 
Now this is a 17, I think. Um, there is a tool so you can like jam the gears here. I actually have it. I think I've only ever used it when I torqued them. Uh, right now I might be in gear, might be in neutral, I'm not sure. Um, I think if you put it in gear, it should lock it in place. If you use an impact gun though, it's fine. So I'm just gonna go get an impact gun with, like I said, I think it's a 17 and uh, zip this off and it'll pull right off. Just be aware of the washers and stuff. I'll show you, I'll show you the setup when I actually get this off. All right, so this is how you're gonna remove it. Just like we pulled it out, the whole thing. Um, I have my new clutch plate here. This is the man in the box, you know, Chimera man in the box, basically same thing. I have all new bolts. I have my six disc uh, clutch pack from SMR here, 60% separate springs from SMR. Um, and I, I actually took this apart quick and I tapped my pressure plate. Uh, you could do that. It's an M610 tap. Uh, you do have to drill a little bit. Just find a drill just big enough to fit in there. There's a little plate, of, kind of a plate of metal sort of you got to drill through. Um, you could also go to Grombeardo. He'll give you a whole new one with six bolts for like 30 or 40 bucks like shipped. Um, I would definitely check him out if you want to save yourself some time and you don't have taps. So what you're going to do, I'm going to show you. There's a vital step in this that no one has ever mentioned. Ironically, someone just did this yesterday and actually knew half of the process. And that was the most I've ever heard anyone mention about it aside from Mike and Mo Power. But uh, he said he had hard shifting and slipping with a brand new clutch. Uh, I spoke to him, told him to try what I'm about to show you. And he said it worked. So I'm gonna show you what no one seems to know about this. I don't even think it was in the instructions, honestly. So I can't say I blame anyone. So I pulled this out, put that to the side. In the middle here, you're gonna have this washer. It will sometimes get stuck to the bottom of this. So there's definitely a little spacer in there. If you don't see it, check the bottom of this. I'm gonna put that there. And now the clutch pack, we're gonna pop out. And I'm gonna take this pressure plate off. So this clutch pack is not important. We don't need that. You have your pressure plate. And I have a dog here on mine. Um, you don't have to tap it. You don't have to get a tapped one, but I highly suggest you do. Mine's tapped so I can fit six screws, or six bolts rather. Um, normally it's only three, so it's like these three or these three, not the other ones, so it's kind of a pain because you have six holes on this one because it kind of needs the extra support, but apparently you don't need it, but I suggest it. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I want you to do, take this and take this. People show, this is a common thing. People do know this. Now look, we're just gonna put it through and I lucked out. So if you look, it's locked in place. It will not spin, it's good, okay? Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna spin it. See how much play I got? So that's not right. There's only two ways this can go. Uh, I lucked out, I just guessed that I got it right the first time. So this works. You'll hear it like finally click in, like, doesn't click this clicks in, that's what you want. You want no play. So remember, like you, you should mark it. I'm not gonna mark it because I can see. I'm gonna put this just like that. I'm gonna put this just like that. And that I know is gonna work, you know? So make sure you get that figured out so you know which way it's gonna sit. Now, take your little spacer, put that right in here. Don't forget that. I don't know what happens if you don't, but I know it's not good. Now this is the part no one seems to know about, no one mentions, and if you put this disc uh, this clutch pack together and you didn't do this, you're probably destroying your transmission as we speak. Um, you probably have bucking and you probably have like, you know, hard shifting and slipping. And that's because this is vital and it's not out there, I guess. So I wanted to put it out there and make sure everyone knows because Mike mentioned this and it saved me a lot of headaches. So I can't really argue that enough. So what you're going to do, you're going to start with the friction disc. All right. These little teeth here, feel the edge. All right. Feel the edge like that. Flip it over, feel the edge. I don't know if you can hear that. Like it, it, you can hear it in person and physically feel that there's a sharp edge, which on this one is right here, and a rounded edge right here. So for the friction discs, I have dog hairs everywhere. You want the rounded edge up. All right, round edge up. Take your metal disc, same exact thing. That's the sharp edge. That's the round edge. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna have the round edge down. You want the rounded edges meeting each other. That's what you want. So now back to the friction disc. Round edge, up. Metal, 
round edge down. I, I pretty much have these like in order already, but I am going to double check. So that's what you want to do. If you didn't do this, even if you don't notice any problems, I highly suggest you just take it apart and look. Because what I did was I put this clutch pad together because everyone swears by, at least for the street, there's like dry clutches that probably function a little bit better, but that's more of a track thing. For the street, I prefer something like this. And this is like the one I keep hearing about. This is like the go-to. And I put it together and it was terrible. It was a uh, hard shifting. It was slipping. It was just not good. I would put it, I would warm it up, fully warm it up, fully depress the clutch. I tighten the clutch. I'd put it in first and it would buck violently. Like it would want to jerk forward immediately. And like I said, I mentioned it to Mike, like, Hey, you know, I just put this together. You know, he's like, Oh, you didn't put the edges facing the right. And he like immediately knew, took it apart, did what he said. And now it runs like a dream. feels a hundred times better. So now I remember which way this sits. You got to kind of play with it a little bit. There we go. There you go. Clutch bag is done. There's like a little gap there. Maybe it's not sitting all the way. There we go. Yeah, that's better. That's what you're looking for. Basically, the, the way I really kind of found out about this is when I did it, I bought a uh, modified pressure plate and I was accidentally sent a 2019 and I didn't know that. And I fought this for like two days and was getting clowned. And I followed every single video I could find on these to a T and I did not have a clutch. And that was why it was because of the pressure plate, but not one time in any of those videos did anyone ever mention, uh, the, the rounded and sharp edges. So now I'm going to take my springs. I like to build this out like of everything just cause it's a little bit easier. I'm going to take this. I probably should have got my ratchet. Yeah, I don't have my ratchet by me. What is this? Nope. All right, so we're just gonna kind of start them. I'm gonna grab my ratchet real quick. Wait one second. All right, that kind of worked out because uh, my battery was about to die anyway. So that's cool. So 10 millimeter, exactly how we took it off. Just gonna kind of get a few threads. I don't know if I wanna necessarily bore you with this process. I might just because I, I wanna be totally transparent and just show you exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I know it kind of gets a little tedious at times, but that's a big point of this whole thing. I'm not exactly what you call a YouTuber, quote unquote. Um, I just kind of feel like it's hard to find some good information on stuff like this. There it goes. Ugh. So when I have information, I like to kind of share it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the whole thing. Obviously, I do make YouTube videos, but uh, not exactly content. It's more just you want to do this, this is how you do it. This is how I do it, at least. You know, I'm not exactly a pro. Oh, let's see. So yeah, this is a very tedious process. But just watch what I'm doing. I'm doing a star pattern. I feel like I missed one of them a few times. I think this one. It doesn't have to be perfect but what a vital part of doing it this way like out of the bike is is that uh you want to not put the bearing in and it, it, it the reason's obvious because you're going to have the nut here so if you put the bearing and you can't get to the nut which i've made that mistake a few times and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get the bearing out without pulling this plate out like it's it's kind of doable but it's a pain and you don't want to like score the bearing at all so Nice and easy now because the bearing is still in the clutch, the stock clutch plate, which is missing at the moment. But I'll get to that. Uh, and then I also have to change a gasket. I always recommend changing these gaskets, but for a while they were uh, very hard to come by. I actually had two of them because I planned on doing this and uh, never used them because they were fine. So you don't really have to change them, but you should. In this situation, I have to because my, uh, my uh, T-Rex cage was kind of in the way and I had to like really finagle this thing out. 
so I'm probably gonna be doing an overhaul on that soon anyway so I might just slap this together just to show you um but I, I should have just taken that cage off in the first place and I wouldn't have to do that all right we're almost done and I remember one thing was uh, when I had that problem with the clutch plate or the uh, the pressure plate being the wrong generation plate, uh, this thing never grabbed. So like that's another problem. I think I mentioned before that plunger, there's a plunger in the clutch cover and a lot of the times that will fall out. So you just gotta be careful. Um, I've put it back together and had zero clutch, like the lever just flops around and it was because of that plunger. Um, I actually thought for sure that that was my problem when I had the wrong pressure plate before I diagnosed that was the issue. Um, so just be aware of that. Luckily, if you forget the plunger, it, it's just, you know, you just pop the cover back off, put it in and just re-put the cover on. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, all right, bottom down. Okay. So sorry for the wait. Again, I just like being transparent, just showing you guys exactly what I'm doing. This is also another vital part. These get torqued, uh, don't quote me, but I think nine foot pounds. And some people do that. The problem is, is that these springs are stiffer. So I think even if you do like the 80% stiffer, which I think is a little overkill, but you know, it's each their own. Um, I, I think it's like the tension of them kind of fucks with these little M6 bolts. So what you do, I don't even like that I have a three eighths ratchet, but they're, they all bottomed out you know they they you know went all the way down take it little oomph to it that's it because a lot of the times people torque them like i i stuff like this i say you should torque but a lot of times people torque them and they break them that's it that's all you got to do and right there your clutch is built all right now uh another thing oh i, I should have mentioned this i'm not too worried about it when uh I do it the way I just did it, like out because everything's up. Uh, let me see if I can show you. The springs, yeah, you really can't see, but the springs, you wanna make sure they don't sit crooked um, because that will also mess you up, which I've done that before too. I've had crooked springs. I'm actually a little concerned about one of them, but I think we're good. I think we're all right. Uh, I really won't know until I go to use it. Um, I've had, I put this in the very first time I did one of these and it, I thought I blew the transmission. It sounded like clunking and banging and it never wanted to go. It was too tight, too loose, insane. And it was just one of these springs was a little crooked. So I just took the plate off, uh, readjusted the springs and put it back on, you're good. But if you do it like this, they sit straight up. So it's really not a problem. It's when you do it, when it's like sitting up, like the bike is sitting up and you're going this way, you gotta kind of hold them. It's a little bit of a pain but uh that that's just something to keep in mind so uh let me see here i'm not gonna need these springs i tend to use these as a tray oh uh, this is that plunger sorry if i'm repeating myself this was over the course of two days and i forget what i said and didn't say this is that plunger if you see this it goes in here just press it in just like that there you go good to go and that is this right here i don't know which way it's supposed to go We'll say it like that. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that didn't work out as much as I planned. Um, I found my problem. This just popped out a little bit. So when you put this in, make sure that the discs stay in and that the shaft here doesn't push it out. So. There we go. It's going to pop out like a half inch ish, something like that. So then we're going to take this thick washer, put that in there, the nut, oh, where's my 17, or 19, whatever this thing was, I think it's up there. Now this is where you can get that tool, so you can jam the gear, so you can torque it. I'm pretty sure it's 47 foot-pounds, so I'm going to go grab that now. All right, so this is the tool. I think it was a Kotako that I got it from. And you just jam it in the gears here. I might have to hold it because it's at an angle. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hold it. All right. Oh, 
There's not a whole lot of threads to it. I think you could also just put it in gear, which I might actually do because this is going to be a little rough. Yeah, this is working now. Torque down. Now I just have to find my stuff clutch plate that I threw somewhere. All right, I'm gonna go into uh, the engine, just uh, get a little bit of lube on it. All right, just kind of recode it. Uh, the lettering you want to face out, or the numbers rather, just goes in here like that. Clicks in, and there you go. That's it. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Very straightforward, you know, like I said, make sure these are tight. Uh, while you're in here, I always recommend grabbing this, your oil screen. Just check it, see I got some shit in there. Not a huge deal, it's pretty typical. I've seen some people with like debris in there. So uh, yeah, I'll probably just rinse this out quick. There's like a tapered end. If you can see this, that end's actually a little bit thinner. Goes in thinner side first. Uh, so yeah. All right, so I know the audio kind of like fucked up. Um, I'm basically just gonna explain what I did a little bit better. I don't know how well you could really hear it. Um, my editing software or my computer, one of the two fucks with me for some reason whenever I use that, so it, it's kind of a pain. Um, basically, take that, that little spacer or that little collar, put that on the shaft or in the basket. It's up to you how you wanna do it. I like to put it on the shaft. Slide the basket on, uh, take that washer, put the washer on. Put the nut on, torque it to 47 foot-pounds, and then make sure you put the bearing in. And then when you put the cover on, you know, I highly suggest you get a new gasket. If you didn't tear it, you don't really need it. Um, do that. Make sure the plunger is in the case. And then just, you know, put it back on. Get a few bolts in there. Uh, hook on your cable. I, I like to, when I have the case in my hand, kind of get the cable in this because it's a little bit easier to kind of fit it while it's on there. And then do that, and then you get the little anchor piece here on the little tab there it's kind of hard to see there's a little tab there sits like that get your bolts in i think they torque to like eight foot pounds i always just use a quarter inch ratchet and just sequence them and then just kind of give them that little nudge so i hope this helps out i know it sucks if you've already done this and you're having problems and i got to redo it but once you've done it like two or three times it's incredibly easy and you can get it done very quickly um so just bang that out i guess real quick um, like I said, I haven't seen anyone really mention it. I hope this helps some people out. I hope that like, you know, you, I hope that I haven't heard anyone like having transmission problems after using this clutch. I only hear good things about it. So, but I never hear that part. So hopefully, you know, this answers some people's questions. It like, you know, gives you a little bit more insight and you'll help some people out. So, all right, I'll see you guys later.